Hello, hello, welcome to Should You Play, where I break down and play meta decks so you can decide if they're worth your hard-earned wildcards. Today we're going to check out a deck that makes people pucker up, because when they see these bad boys, they know they're on a timer. And you should know by the title of the video, I'm talking about Nautilus and Maokai, who are going to go in deep to swing out and destroy your life total, or your deck. So first, let's talk about one of the two stars of the show, the Twisted Tree himself, Maokai. Maokai is a 4 cost champion who tosses 2 cards and summons a sapling whenever you play another ally for the first time in a round. This ability contributes greatly to the deck's angle, which is going in deep. And that sapling has challengers, so during your attack phase, it's a good tool to get rid of annoying threats like elusive creatures, or simply getting a big boy out the way so your big boy could swing freely. Keep in mind, the saplings die at the end of the turn because they have an ability attached to them that I cannot pronounce because I am incredibly stupid. But since this dies at the end regardless, you'll want to make sure to make use of them every time, whether it's on your attack, or using them to chump blocks during your defense. Now let's talk about Maokai's level up requirements. He needs a combined total of 25 ally units dying or cards being tossed to level up. So each time you toss a card, which is a mechanic that obliterates the bottom cards of your deck, or when an ally dies, Maokai gets closer to leveling up. So when you finally level up Maokai, he obliterates the enemy's deck, leaving four non-champion cards in it. So what does that mean? Well... Hey Terry, you want some? This bitch empty! Yay! Maokai destroying the opponent's deck is a win condition on its own. Because if a player draws from an empty library, they will lose the game, meaning the opponent has four turns to try to win the game. So you could be a little shit and just play defense until their time is up. Maokai also gains regenerate, making him a good blocker and he summons a sapling at the start of each round without needing to summon an ally first, giving you a free tool each round to disrupt the opponent's creatures. Just keep in mind, Maokai is a win con for your deck. If you notice your opponent has a lot of removal, instead of playing him, bide your time and fulfill his level up requirement so the second he hits the ground, the enemy's deck is done for. Now, let's talk about the absolute unit himself, Nautilus. He comes in with a hefty 7 mana cost, so you won't be able to play him until towards the late game. Once he comes down, he has no power, but he has 12 health with toughness, meaning he will negate 1 damage every time he takes a hit. He also comes with Fearsome, so if you manage to increase his power before his level up, you could start swinging. But in my experience, with the deck, it's very rare for Nautilus to not level up the moment he's on the field, because his level up requirement is for you to be in deep, which is a mechanic that buffs creatures with deep when your deck has 15 or less cards. Now, I know getting down to 15 cards sounds dangerous, but when Nautilus levels up, he creates a copy for every creature with mana cost 4 or greater, and puts them back into your deck. In some cases, I have went from 15 cards all the way back up to 26, and the deep effect still applies even if you go past the 15 card requirement. So now you must be thinking, Nautilus has to be total monster when he levels up, right? Well, go ahead and see for yourself how it looks like when a leveled up Nautilus hits the field. Yeah. <sighs> oh, it's cart. When this bad boy hits the field, not only is he a 13-13 with fearsome and toughness, he also reduces the cost of sea creatures in your hand by 4, as long as he's on the field. And what does the deck primarily consist of? You guessed it, some big ol' sea creatures that get plus 3 plus 3 added to their attack and defense once you're in deep. With Nautilus, you'll be casting huge threats for as low as 2 mana a pop, creating a massive army of a board state that can overrun your opponents and get you the win through combat damage. Now that we've gone over the stars of the show, let's talk about the overall strategy of the deck, covering how you will win and how you will want to play. So the main point of this deck is to survive until late game, so you can take full advantage of a leveled up Maokai or leveled up Nautilus to either put your opponents on a 5 turn clock, or to outvalue your opponents by casting these massive sea creatures at a discount. To do this, instead of being on the offensive, you'll want to be on the defensive until you can reach this point. Instead of consistently attacking with your creatures, use the low cost creatures like the Dredgers, Jaw Hunters, or the Dead Bloom, Wanderers to your advantage. The Dredgers provide an easy chump blocker for early game damage, while the Jaw Hunters can take care of problems more directly since it has Challenger attached to it. And also, getting a sea monster in your hand out of it is good for late game. 
Finally, the Dead Bloom Wanderer has a lifesteal, so you can gain back any missing health when things start to look bad. Riptide provides some great defense mechanics in the early game. Use it to stun enemies that will put you in a critical state, or save it long enough to get Nautilus out, so you could shuffle that card back into their deck. Trust me, it is satisfying to see an opponent put all their love and buffs into one creature only for you to take it away. Another great card for defense is the Devourer of Depths, which obliterates an enemy with less health than it. Obliterate doesn't mean kill it, it means completely take it out of the game so the card won't trigger any last breath effects. And yes, I'm looking at you the Undying, you little persistent shit. Keep in mind, Devourer gets plus 3 plus 3 when you're in deep, making it a 7-7, seven, seven, which means not only can it swing hard, but it can also take care of some big boy threats like Commander Ledros. Now, what about going on the offensive? Well, Abyssal Eye enables that early on with Elusive, but what you really want out of this is the card draw effect, because remember, tossing cards is only a requirement for Maokai. If you want to go in deep, drawing cards can get you there too. Now a 3-3 can be a threat over time, but when you go in deep and this card becomes a 6-6 is when it becomes a game ender if your opponent has no answer to it. Okay, so obviously Nautilus is what you want to be aggressive with, but what if I sweetened the deal and told you you could possibly make him hit the opponent directly through combat damage? Well, Terror of the Tides enables this by giving sea monster allies fearsome when it's on the field and giving all enemies minus 2 attack when it attacks, meaning some enemies may go below the 3 power requirement needing to block your creatures. Wait, I said needing instead of needed, that was weird, I meant to say needed, my bad. Anyways, this is a game ender card, so be careful when you put it down. In some cases, you'll only need it to swing once for it to end the game. And that's it for the deck. Because of the absolute blowout nature of the deck, I decided to personally name this deck Bite the Pillow. Because when you're playing this deck, you're gonna go in deep. Get it? <laughs> Get it? It's 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 a sexual innuendo because I'm unoriginal. Anyways, I'm Chris from Genuine Chill, and this has been Should You Play. If you liked the video, you should like the video because we appreciate your support, and maybe follow us on Twitch where we stream Runeterra and a variety of games. I hope to see you guys next time when I continue to cover even more stupid decks because I actually really like this game. <laughs>